Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Peter Smith. I am the Chief Executive Officer of the Port Phillip City Council. I declare this special meeting of the Port Phillip City Council open and I welcome the members of the public who are here tonight. The City of Port Phillip respectfully acknowledges the Ellicott Willem clan of the Boon and we pay our respects to their elders, both past and present. We acknowledge and uphold their continuing relationship to this land. I will now facilitate the appointment of a temporary chairperson in accordance with part four, section 28 of the council meeting procedure, local law number four, two slash 2009. So uh, councillors are now called for nominations for the position of temporary chairperson. Thank you, Councillor Bond. Uh, nominate Councillor Pearl. Do I have a seconder for that nomination? Thank you, Councillor Gross. Do I have any further nominations? Thank you, councillors. Uh, then I declare Councillor Pearl elected as a temporary chairperson by the CEO. Thank you, Councillor Pearl. Doesn't, I hope I didn't break the heritage listed chair. This is a special meeting of the City of Port Phillip Council. The purpose of this special meeting is to elect a mayor and a deputy mayor. Therefore, in accordance with Council's meeting procedures local law, tonight's agenda will have no public question time or councillor question time. And as there is no items being formally debated by Council tonight, there will be no opportunity for the public to make any formal comments. Please note that this uh, meeting is being live streamed. The first time a mayoral election is actually being live streamed to the public. Live streaming allows, <coughs> live streaming and recording allows the community to watch and listen to the meeting in real time, providing greater access to council decision making and improving openness and transparency. The live stream of this meeting will be available on council's website um, and the recording, sorry, the, the live streaming of this meeting is available through Council's website and the recording of this meeting will be available in approximately 48 hours time. Councillors, I move to item three. There being no apologies as we're all in the chamber this evening, I shall move to item four and request any declarations of conflict of interest from councillors here tonight regarding items that are being considered. You've all got a conflict, that's correct. There being no formal conflicts, uh, we'll move to the next item, which is item five. Um, I'd now like to invite the Mayor, Councillor Voss, to uh, address Council. Thank you very much, um, Councillor Pearl. Firstly, I wanted to say thank you to all of you councillors for being such a wonderful group of councillors. It's been a great honour to be your mayor and I've been humbled by your support over the last 12 months. I actually can't believe that 12 months ago we'd just taken our oath of affirmation and were sworn in as councillors to serve and lead this city in the best interests of the people of the city of Port Phillip. It's gone really fast. It's been an incredible year, one where we saw the previous CEO leave, have a stabilising interim CEO in Carol Jeffs, and we've finally settled on a new CEO, Peter Smith, to take on the job to lead this organisation, along with our very capable and inspiring executive to deliver our council plan for our community. This is such a terrific and evolving organisation that it is amazing to have such talented and caring people around us working for our community so thank you for all the work that you do. Finalising our first council plan was a huge effort, but one we got through together. And the result is one that we can be immensely proud of. It's ambitious and it's transformative. It sits perfectly with this group, which has such high expectations of our organisation to deliver what is needed. We've ticked some huge projects, off already and celebrated a little along the way. Big ones being the opening of the Palais Theatre, winning the Pride Centre and successfully uniting this council with a clear focus on the Elster Creek flooding issue in Elwood. We're carefully considering the St Kilda Road Precinct 2 applications and doing as much as practical to give our community an insight into our decision making. 
Looking forward to Fisherman's Bend, we've got Farrar Street, we've got the new park, community centre and the school opening next year. And it's our first catalytic project in Fisherman's Bend, which will set the tone, along with many more big issues and decisions to work through municipally wide. We have a strong financial position and with our focus on good governance and transparency, transparency we're set for great things. I'm especially grateful uh, to the Deputy Mayor Catherine Copsey who took on the role and worked hard for the benefit of us all. Thank you for everything that you have done, Councillor. I also wanted to pay tribute to the silent heroes that are every day beavering away in the office to help make our lives easier and to carry out our civic duties. In particular, the Mayor and Councillor's Office with Marissa, Mary, Laura and now this awesome Sam. Thank you for your constant attention and help. What will we ever do without you? And while I'm here, I wanted to do a special shout out to Sandra. Uh, Sandra's been my trusted rock for media, always putting scenarios in front of me so I'm able to make the best decisions I can. Consistent and she always delivers. Thank you. And lastly, just before I finish, I just wanted to thank my family, uh, Warren, Lachlan, Caitlin and Eliza. I'm really incredibly lucky to have you all. You've all been amazing in your support of me and my work for our community. I know it's not easy on you, all with me being out all day and every night of the week, but I couldn't ask for a better family. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Voss. Um, second part of item five, I now invite the outgoing Deputy Mayor. Pardon me. Oh, sorry. Congratulations, Councillor Voss. I'll now invite the outgoing Deputy Mayor, Councillor Copsey, to address Council. Thank you. I'll start by acknowledging that we meet tonight on the lands of the Alicut Willem clan of the Boon Pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. So yes, what a year it's been. Roughly 12 months ago we were elected. We are broadly speaking a new Council, with seven of us elected. Um, knew this term, and five of us who are brand new to the role. And it's been an incredible year of getting to know one another and working together. Bernadine has provided continuity from the old council to the new and guided us through the big jobs of the first year, both expected and extraordinary, like the appointment of our new CEO, and has given us a really solid framework for working together. I'd like to acknowledge Councillor Voss's um, service as mayor and thank you. I'd also like to thank my fellow councillors for supporting me as Deputy Mayor in my first year as an elected representative, uh, and particularly Bernadine for involving me in the leadership team this year. As well as representing um, councillor at events and as a spokesperson, it's been a fantastic way to gain insight into the hard work that this organisation carries out every day, um, and also to make further connections with our fantastic community. And what a year we've had. I was looking back on my notes from my incoming speech um, as Deputy Mayor and reflecting that there was a bit of a vibe in the air. Donald Trump had just been elected, if you can believe it's only been a year. Um, and I was speaking that evening about how in the context of what seems to be a faltering faith in our political institutions, councils have a real role to play in making sure that local democracy is engaging and making people's participation in their local municipality mean something. So we've undertaken some really important conversations with our community, particularly in this first year. It was such a highlight to spend time um, in our community engagement sessions with the community to develop our council plan. And together we've identified some key challenges uh, and transformations that we want to carry out as a group of councillors to make this city better and um, keep the great things about it. I'm really looking forward to uh, further conversations as we head over into summer, um, as we tackle some of those biggest challenges that we've identified, like fighting congestion, making our streets for people as part of our integrated transport strategy, which is going to be a 
changing um, discussion for our municipality. And also finding a way forward to realise our community's vision for Fisherman's Bend and make sure that we have a voice in that process. I love this job. There is actually nothing I'd rather be doing with my time. And I think about what a rare privilege it is to be in this chamber and working with this group of people most uh, weeks when we get together for a discussion. I do truly value working with this group and I value your individual contributions to what we achieve as a whole. But most of all, I really value the incredible community organisations that we partner with here in Port Phillip. We are so blessed to have a community that gets it, a community that cares and is involved and is ready to partner with us um, to make this city a better place. Whether it's sheltering people, helping others in the community learn new skills, giving companionship to people who would otherwise be lonely, offering support for those who need a hand, keeping our parks and streets and beaches clean, organising community events or making art for us all to enjoy. There are so many people that contribute and the city would not be itself without you. And learning more about and supporting the great community organisations um, has been one of the best parts of my job and a particular um, opportunity as Deputy Mayor. I feel I've had a real um, opportunity to get out and meet people. So that's been such a highlight and I want to um, put the spotlight on our community organisations tonight and say thank you. The core focus of our council plan is finding solutions to the big environmental and social challenges that threaten the beautiful place that we're stewards of. The egalitarian and compassionate spirit of our community that we need to preserve and advance for the future. And, the, and preserving the special essence of the neighbourhoods that we call home. These are all reasons that I sought election in the first place. So I feel so lucky. It has been a pleasure and an absolute privilege to serve as your Deputy Mayor this term. I thank the community once again for their faith in putting me in this place. And I thank the councillors for the support over this term. Councillor Voss and Councillor um, Councillor Copsey, on behalf of the residual amount of councillors I haven't spoken tonight, thank you for your leadership, passion, and integrity. And we obviously look forward to the continued commitment that you're making throughout the rest of this term on council. We now move to item six. Um, some background: this item is in uh, in the event that the councillors here tonight wish to have a two-year term mayor. Uh, we'll put the, um, the question to councillors. If someone wishes to pose a motion, uh, we'll consider that motion. If there's no motion put, uh, it will be assumed that the election of Mayor tonight will be for a single year. In accordance with Section 71.2 of the Local Government Act 1989, before a mayor is elected, the council may resolve to elect a mayor for a term of two years. Councillors, do I have a motion to elect a mayor for a two-year term? There being no motion put, I will move to item seven. Item seven is the election of the mayor. The election of the mayor is in accordance with section 71 of the Local Government Act 1989 and part four, section 28 of the council meeting procedure, local law number two, 2009. Councillors, I now call for nominations for the position of mayor. Councillor Crawford. I'd like to nominate Councillor Voss. Thank you, Councillor Crawford. Councillor Crawford has nominated Councillor Voss. Would another councillor wish to second that nomination? Councillor Bond. Do I have any further nominations for the position of Mayor? Councillor Brand. Uh, councillor Copsey. Councillor uh, Brand has nominated Councillor Copsey. Would anyone wish to second that nomination? Councillor Simic. Do I have any further nominations? Okay, there being no further nominations, the 
Um, we have two nominations for the position of Mayor, Councillor Voss and Councillor Copsey. I need to put these nominations to the vote and they'll be voted on the order in which they were nominated. All councillors must vote for one councillor only. For a councillor to be elected as mayor, that councillor must receive a majority of votes. All nine of us here this evening, that equates to five votes. I'll now put to the vote Councillor Voss. Councillors, please indicate by a show of hands if you want to vote for Councillor Voss as the position of mayor. There being five councillors uh, voting for Mayor Voss, a majority has been reached. However, I'll go through the process to ensure due process and now ask councillors to please indicate through a show of hands if you want to vote for Councillor Copsey. Please raise your hands now. A majority decision has been reached. I hereby declare Councillor Voss elected as Mayor, five votes to four. As a result, I now invite, much to the relief of many people, the Mayor to take the chairperson to address the gallery. C congratulations, Councillor Voss. Thank you very much, Marcus, for sitting in the big, uncomfortable chair. Oh, I'm actually shaking. Thank you. It's a great honour that you, councillors, have placed your trust in me to support me for 2018. It's a privilege to serve our community, and I look forward to bringing a bold, inclusive, respectful approach to our discussions and our problem solving. I know that in a contested vote, there are those that are not successful. I also know it hurts, and um, my best wishes to you, and thank you for the contest, Councillor Copsey. I also know that there's a couple of councillors that also decided not to compete for the benefit of us all, and that's not gone unnoticed, and I thank you for your braveness. But there's been a few things that I've learned during this process and uh, over the last few weeks in particular and I will endeavour to do all I can to ensure that we pull our strengths and harness our collective talents and use them when necessary. Again, I wanted to thank my dear family who are not here, uh, Warren, Lachlan, Caitlin and Eliza. I wanted to thank you for sharing this special moment with me. It means a lot to me that you're here. Councillors, we've got a big year ahead of us and we have some huge advocacy items on our agenda. We've got a state government election and possibly a federal government one too. Complex issues and important decisions, decisions need to be made. And through it all, I know we'll continue to put into practice our goal to adhere to our shared values, including integrity, respect and unity. Our diversity is our strength. Our city is also changing. We have numerous dilemmas we are facing. We will continue to rise to our challenges to ensure our community is better off and well informed. This council is committed to achieving good governance and will continue to actively engage our community on key issues of significance and make decisions in an open and transparent manner. We've already accomplished many things together and we have some terrific projects to deliver on for our community, like JL Murphy Reserve, the Peanut Farm Pavilion, along with South Melbourne Life Saving Club, the St Kilda Marina Tender, Safer and Cleaner Streets, the Heritage Review, the Housing Reviews, upgrading our paths and easier ways to get around, and the list goes on. There's a huge agenda. We have the task of ensuring our St Kilda Road community comes through the Metro Tunnel works well, with Albert Reserve, placemaking, Park Street re, uh, reinvigorated, and the new Tramlink and Moray Street bike lane. We have a significant list of state government advocacy initiatives, such as the Fisherman's Bend Tram, to be delivered within the mixed use within the next four years, our sustainability hub, 
implemented for waste and organics processing. Marlborough Street, the affordable housing and the eco centre. We're looking for 50-50 funding there for a new building as well as the Albert Park Lake water harvesting scheme. And to top it off, we've got our four transformations in our council plan. Water, waste, fishermen's bend and transport. Any one of them will define our term, but four is huge. But if you know this group, it's typical of our high expectations. Port Phillip is a great municipality, the best in my opinion. We're blessed with a beautiful bay, huge parks, terrific retail shops, vibrant businesses and active and amazing residents. We also know that there are many things that can be done to make our municipality even better. And I look forward to the challenge and to working with my fellow councillors and council staff to deliver the best outcomes for our community. While we have a huge agenda, I'm also going to continue my mayoral focus on eliminating unwanted tagging, unwanted tagging from our community and noisy motorbikes and the plague of litter and dump rubbish. They all need to be a thing of the past. In a few minutes, councillors, the deputy mayor will be elected and I will work particularly closely with the person elected to the office. It will be an honour to serve you as Mayor this year. Thank you very much. We'll go to item nine, the election of the Deputy Mayor. The election of the Deputy Mayor is in accordance with part four, section 28 of the Council Meeting Procedure Local Law number two slash 2009. I now call for nominations for the position of Deputy Mayor. Councillor uh, Bo uh, Brand. I nominate uh, Councillor Baxter. Thank you. Councillor Baxter has been nominated. Do I have a seconder? Sorry. Second. Councillor Sinich. Do I have any further nominations? Councillor Crawford. I'd like to uh, nominate... Councillor Gross. Councillor Gross has, has been um, uh, moved. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Bond? Do I have any further nominations? I will now ask the councillors to show uh, their vote by a show of hands and I assume it's done in order that they've Correct. been um, nominated so we'll please um, put up your hand if you uh, would like to see Councillor Baxter as the Deputy Mayor. Thank you, that's four votes. Uh, put your hand up if you'd like to see Councillor Gross as Deputy Mayor. Uh, that's five votes. Uh, so I declare Councillor Gross elected as Deputy Mayor. Well done. <laughs> I invite the Deputy Mayor to address the gallery. Well, thanks very much, Madam Mayor. Look, I, I wish I could say that I didn't really appreciate this appointment. I wish I could say it's like water off a duck's back. But it's incredibly important to me and it, it's uh, something that I deeply appreciate. And, uh, you know, local government is a creature of statute. And in the Local Government Act, the Office of Deputy Mayor is not even mentioned. So to some extent, it's a bit of a confection. And yet, it is very important to me that I get this. Some, and sometimes the deputy mayoralty is used as a uh, fob off for those people who couldn't be trusted with the mayoralty. I hope that's not the case here. And sometimes, sometimes uh, it's an opportunity for which was demonstrated last time for someone to work with the Mayor and enhance the stature and office of both holders. And I hope that's, and trust that that will be the case this time. 
I want to say one thing before I go completely off piste. Um, and uh, to the Mayor, I think you, you played a blinder last year, um, or last mayoral year. I used to sit at the end of the table and think, God, she's so organised and I'm chaotic. She's got a great memory and mine is really porous. She is determined to get on top of every detail, whereas I'm a big picture man. So uh, I thought, you, you, you know, it was a challenging year. Nine very high calibre councillors, but opinionated from three separate parties and a contest of policy and uh, position is basically every, every meeting's uh, agenda. So now let me go off piste. 50 years ago, I played in uh, Julius Caesar. Sorry? I'm sure I want to do this. The mayor gave a responsible speech. It's time for me to not. So 50 years ago, I played Calpurnia, Caesar's wife, in the Shakespearean version, Julius Caesar. Now, um, Julius Caesar is basically a play about the second in charge. What does the second in charge do when confronted with disappointment in the leader? Well, back in those days, they stabbed them to death. <laughs> Nowadays, we get in the outside consultant and have a team building com um, session. So, um, you know, I can't remember what happened yesterday, but I can remember from 50 years that graves have yawned and yielded up their dead. Fierce, fiery warriors walked upon the clouds in ranks and squadrons and right forms of war, which drizzled blood upon the capital. Horses did neigh, and dying men did curse, and ghosts did squeal and scream around the capital. O oh, Caesar, these things are beyond all belief, and I do fear them. Anyway, he didn't listen to his wife. He went off to the uh, Senate and got murdered. And his final words were, et tu Brute, the vocative of Brutus, his great friend. Well. <laughs> and, but let me go forward to um, Mark Anthony's great speech in the forum. The, the first thing, you know, the friends, Roman countrymen, lend me your ears. I've come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. And then he said, the evil that men do live after them. The good is oft interred in their bones. In other words, everyone remembers the muck-ups. Everyone remembers the betrayals, the mistakes, the disasters. But the good is often interred in their bones. And for me, uh, 50 years minus eight, I had to reflect on that when I had my little holiday from being a councillor, when I went to the naughty corner, and I didn't want my life to be defined by what the community said was the great stuff up, which was the triangle. So it's amazing that, you know, over 40 years later, when I was sort of suffering a political demise, that I recalled those words and the utter wisdom, and for me, the unfortunate wisdom of, you know, the good will be interred with my bones, but. Um, the evil that men do live after them. So my second go at being a councillor has been an opportunity to redress that overwhelming political truth that people remember the bad things and never give credit to the good. So that's why this is a very emotionally charged moment for me. Um, the second thing is uh, is what what it says about the relationship between a political leader and the two I see. And so I think, of course we live in far more civilised times, but if you go through the speech about um, Brutus and um, Julius Caesar, you find extraordinary truths about how in political office you deal with conflict and um, 
And so I still read that speech occasionally and still, and, and, and welcome the chance to just celebrate it today when I'm now a 2IC to a leader who I'm looking forward to working with. And it has to be said, you know, we're really like all nine of us are butted heads. And I think at this stage of our relationship, it's never been closer and we've had to share some, some cruel truths with each other. And we have come out and I think a, a more mature, robust relationship. So thanks very much for listening to my off-piste. Uh, it's a huge honour and relief for me to um, take this next step in my political rehabilitation and uh, I'm really looking forward to the year. Congratulations. Thanks very much. So, there being no further business, I declare the meeting closed. However, I would like to invite you to attend some light refreshments out in the Womanjika room next to the council chambers. Thank you very much.